for those who are part of our normal congregation, um, those who have been faithfully attending, it's so exciting to be worshipping together with you this morning. In the scriptures in the psalm, it says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And this is where we are this morning. It is so, so exciting. My name is Mo, and I'll be your host this morning. I have the privilege of being your host this morning. So though today um, is a special Sunday, we're going to be doing a lot of the normal program. So we're going to be having um, we're going to be having worship this morning. We're going to be having fellowship time. Our kids' church will go out. Our kids will go out for kids programming. Um, we'll, we'll have reading of the word. Um, we'll have the preaching of the word, um, and then we'll just be able to conclude together um, in, in worship and in benediction. Then we'll also have some special guests this morning. For those of you who know, and for those of you who don't know, our church is a combination of a number of partnerships, a number of conversations. So we have some of our church partners here this morning. We also have some of our sending church members here with us. Um, there will be a couple of messages that will be shared. We're going to be showing a video. Um, and and, and, and it's, a, it's a day of excitement and joy this morning, church. So, so, so let's just enjoy the moment. Praise the Lord together this morning. I, 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 it's not on the script for me to pray, but I love to pray. The worship team is supposed to pray, but I'd love to pray for us this morning. Let's, let's bow our heads and pray, church. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day. We thank you for this glorious, joyous day. We thank you that as a church that's been birthed by you, from you, the vision was given to our church leadership by you, Lord. We thank you that it's a culmination of a number of different churches who had faithfully been serving the kingdom of God, various communities, Lord, and, and, and the vision was we need this kind of church, with this heart, in this community, in this location, Lord. And for that, we just want to take the time to thank you and to praise you, Lord. Thank you for everything that has gone on leading up to this moment. That which we know and that which we don't know. The seen and the unseen, Father. We just thank you for your faithfulness, Lord Jesus. This morning, we're in your house. We're here to worship. We're in your presence. So we ask that you may give us a, a special blessing, a special portion of your spirit this morning. Allow us to worship together. Allow us to worship and to praise you in spirit and truth. We pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 So we normally do the three things. We talk about who we are as Fellowship City, but we have a moment in the church. We're going to have a moment in the service where we will actually go into that in a bit more detail with a bit more background. So we're not going to do that at this point in the service. We have a video to show you. And after that, after this video, we'll then transition and the worship team will lead us in worship and in song. Please um, have a look at the screen as you listen to the message. Good morning, I'm Dean Jansen van Rinsberg, the ministry team leader here at Pierre van Riefeld for this community. As the ministry here at Pierre van Riefeld, it is our absolute goal to help people to discover Christ and to make an impact in our community. Since 2017, while Rainer was part of our ministry team here, he shared with us his dream to start a transcultural ministry. And from the beginning, we were part of the inception, and actually today is the birth of this child that we've seen come through the whole process. And we are so excited to be part of this new plant, and we really pray that God will really use this ministry in this area. My name is Amanda Craig, and I'm also part of the ministry team here at Giver Money Bell to Love's Family. I also had the privilege of being part of the team at Durham Cliff Family Church, specifically with the English community. So on a personal level, I am so excited about the different partnerships and the way that everything is unfolding for Fellowship City in the area of Centurion, where it is situated. Our congregation, the Open Land Health and Growth Family, is excited, as mentioned, about the um, partnerships between Rooted Fellowship, between Durham Cliff Family Church, ourselves, and then obviously Fellowship City, as we have come to know it. As this is your launch and your first time together in person, we celebrate this with you. It may be a wonderful, wonderful joy. As part of our excitement, we are truly, truly excited about the area where this congregation is situated. In Centurion and as a transcultural church to make a difference, not only in Centurion, but also in our country. So we hope that you will um, 
He is excited as we are about how everything has unfolded. God's dream and different people's hearts that have been placed, the way that this whole process has come together, and the way that partnerships have been built throughout this way of relationship with each other and an ecumenical way of doing this. And so our wish for you is that you may, as Finnish City, always keep asking where and how is God at work? And how can you, as a congregation, follow in that? My name is Olivia Mayer, and I'm also one of the ministers here at the Brandon Felt and Blissful Meeting. And I would love to do a prayer for you and some blessing. And I'm going to do it from Ephesians 1, verse 15 to 19. Let's close our eyes. That's why, when I heard of the solid trust you have in the Master Jesus, and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I pray, I think of you and give thanks. But I do more than that. I ask. I ask the God of our Master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning and knowing Him personally. Your eyes focused and clear, so that you can see exactly what it is He is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life He has for His followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of His work in us who trust Him. Endless energy, boundless strength. Amen. The rising sun to the setting sun. 
Amen, church. Let's take a seat. How, how do you transition from that? You know? You just stay there. Praise the Lord. You just stay there. Just stay there. The beauty of church and the beauty of worship is um, there's no right way of doing it. That's, that's me. I'm not speaking on behalf of the church. This is working with the Lord for some time. And the beauty of Jesus, the beauty of our Lord and Savior. We experience Him, certain things we experience the same way, and then there's certain things we experience differently. There's certain expressions that we express the same way, and then there's certain expressions that we express differently. So as a church, we, we, we have people from different church backgrounds, and it'll have its growing pains, but the beauty of that is we, we see this diverse multiple members of the same body that look different but form part of the same body. As, as the Bible speaks about, you know. So, so, so just an encouragement. I think we've been speaking over the past couple of weeks to say we're shaping culture. We're shaping our culture as a church. And so it's going to take time and it's okay. It's going to take time and it's okay. Please be comfortable. Where you're uncomfortable, let's keep praying. Let's keep asking for grace. Because without the grace of Christ, it's going to be very difficult. We're at the time in our service where um, we're going to be releasing our kids, but we always want to just publicly declare our view of children in the church. And um, there's an old hymn that says, "Come, the, let the little children come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." Citing the words of Jesus, "Let the children come to me, for theirs is the kingdom. The kingdom belongs." to such as these. And so, as a church, we value our children. We want to make sure we intentionally have them stay with us in the service up to this stage in the service. They see us worshiping together. They see us praying together. Um, they learn from us. And then we release them to our amazing um, kids team church, kids church. Um, and so, the ladies are at the back there. Um, at this stage, the children will leave us. We do encourage you or we do ask that parents, please walk out with your children and check them in. So even though they're old enough to check themselves in, it's important that we do ask you to walk out with your kids, go and check them in, and then you'll come back into the service. Um, so we'll just take this moment to, to just wave goodbye to our kids. Bye, kids. <laughs> we release you. <laughs> this way. Just give them a few more moments. We have a lot of kids in the church. Thank you. So we were joking with um, a, a couple of us within the welcome team, I won't mention names, they'll be a bit embarrassed, but we were joking about the fact that the quickest way to multiply and grow as a church is to follow um, the Biblical Commission. You know, so, so next year, yo, we'll double the size, okay, any salvations? I know they're still growing in the Lord. <laughs> yeah, people are still growing. Uh, we, we thank the Lord for, for, the, for the children, we thank the Lord for the children. Um, just as a quick note as well, um, now we're coming into sort of the admin portion of the service. Uh, please remember that we are following um, COVID protocols, so you would have seen, we, we, we notified you that the, the, the chairs were spaced out for social distancing. If you've come as a family or with loved ones, you are encouraged um, um, to, to actually sit a bit closer. But we are required to keep our masks on at all times. Um, if you do want to take a breath, because we know that it does get hot, please just feel free to just get a breather. Stay by the door so that you can still hear what's happening in the service. But again, this is more so to protect everyone as a church. Um, and we're just thankful that we do have this opportunity to meet in person. But we definitely still want to be as conscious as we possibly can. So, so, so please be reminded of that. Let's remind one another. A couple of announcements that we want to go through. Um, we would love to chat, to chat and to share info 
um, because there's a lot happening on church. So normally you'd see that there's a lot of slides that we put up here um, on our website and our social media platforms. There's a lot of information that's always happening in the church. And so we encourage you to, 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 go, to go online, to find the information. And if you have any questions, please feel free to come and ask myself or anyone else who's been serving this morning. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll glad you actually share, share the information with you. Um, our website is up. Um, we praise the Lord, our website is up. Uh, amen, amen, amen. Yes, thank you. Thank you, AJ. Um, yeah, so I guess we, we, we do also have like a cross demographic of ages. So there are those who are excited about the website and there are those who are not. It's okay. Um, so there's a lot of information on the church. We encourage you to go on there. The QR code is up. And so we, we were chatting with some of us that like sometimes technology cooperates and sometimes it doesn't. So for some phones we're aware that it's seamless and for others it's not. Um, and so we, we do encourage you to utilize um, even some of the traditional means. So if you do want to go old school, um, we encourage you to email us at community at fellowshipcity.co.za. Email us at community at fellowshipcity.co.za. And then we're also on social media platforms. We're across um, Instagram, we're across Facebook. Um, you'll find us on YouTube, um, so please feel free to follow us um, on our social media platforms. At this moment, we're going to ask Pastor Oni to come up. Um, he'll be sharing with us a bit more about the, sort of the, 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 the background and the heart behind fellowship and some of our DNA and our values. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks, bro. Good morning, everyone. Hey. How are you guys doing? Hey. Fantastic. Uh, it's always good to see that uh, while many things do change, some things don't. And, uh, and seeing the server quickly run through there and do something with cables, and um, that's, a, that's man, it's epic, epic. Um, my name is, is One. Uh, I get the privilege of serving as one of the pastors at a church called Rooted Fellowship in the Hatfield area, and, uh, and and I come on kind of on their behalf in a sense. I'm representing them while I'm here, and it's a tremendous joy to see this actually come to fruition. Uh, this has been many months and many years in the planning and praying and, and concepts and strategies and, and this is absolutely incredible and as we look back on the year that we've had, the last 18 months that we've had to be able to gather like this, uh, to sing these praises, to, to start a church, to publicly launch. This is a supernatural work. It's no small thing. Um, and so I want us to really celebrate that uh, today and as the days continue. Uh, I've been asked to share a little bit about uh, what all of this means, uh, how are we connected as Rooted Fellowship and Fellowship City. Um, I'm going to be blatantly honest. This whole fellowship thing, which is a, a group of churches uh, that come together under the banner of the fellowship, that's, we just want to plant as many churches as we can. We want to see healthy communities of faith throughout this uh, city and province and country and continent and world. Um, and so we want to do that through what we believe God has called us to in the fellowship, but in all honesty, the fellowship is actually Reino and Sikhe's idea. Um, it is not my idea. What happened is we had planted Rooted Fellowship, and uh, Sikhe, who planted another church in the east of Johannesburg called Renewal Fellowship, they both came to me and said, Hey, listen, at different times, but hey, uh, we'd love to come and learn from you guys, and then would you be interested in sending us out? And what would that look like? And so, in all honesty, mate, if this fails, it's your fault. Right? Um, no, but, but it really is. And, and, but the cool thing is that we're, we're different churches with different people, but our vision is the same. And so this very morning, knowing that in two different locations, what I'm about to say to you now, in the sense that this is who we are, is being said at those churches as well. Fellowship City, much like Rooted Fellowship, believes in three things. We believe that God has called us to be about these three things. And that is gospel-centered, disciple-making, and transcultural. Let me be brief in unpacking what that means. Gospel-centered simply means that we believe in the perfect life, or the perfect birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, affirming Him as Lord and Savior. We believe that one day He will return to make all things new again. We center everything that we do around that beautiful truth. Or also believe that God's called us to make disciples, so therefore we are disciple-making. As the gospel transforms the individual life of a person, we want to see the multiplying effect of that. We believe that best happens through the making of disciples. And then lastly, we are transcultural. Right? It sounds like multi-ethnic, sounds like multicultural. What does that mean? Well, it's a view of community that reflects, embraces, and enjoys the diversity of its context. And by the power of the gospel, transcends it to create one new community. And so we pray that God would do all of that through Fellowship City as he continues to reach many and plug them into community and watch them grow 
so that they might be sent out to do more of his amazing work. I was given five minutes to share a little story about how uh, I got to meet Reno and Marie, and I thought to myself, five minutes for a black preacher um, is a death sentence. <laughs> so I'm going to be as brief as I can. I, I met Reno, uh, Reno, almost, what, four years ago, I think? Uh, five years ago at a coffee shop called Vintage Coffee. Uh, I remember it to this day. We sat at the window, um, uh, great coffee, that coffee shop no longer exists. And uh, he wanted to meet with me. I think he set up a meeting through Peter Vessels, who's also here. And, uh, and we sat down and he shared what God had laid in his heart. He believed God was calling him uh, to start uh, something that would be multi-ethnic, multicultural, that would reflect the rich diversity of our context. I'm sitting there thinking to myself, oh no, here we go. Yet again, a well-meaning white guy with good intentions wanting to do some really good gospel work. Uh, if anything, I'm going to get a good coffee out of this. <laughs> I told him no. You remember that? I was like, oh, we're not interested. We're not uh, ready as a church part. I believe we were about two years old at the time. We're not ready to do this. Uh, we're still young, and I just, I just don't know if you're the guy. But he persisted. If you know anything about Reno, he persists. <laughs> Doesn't stop. And so he kept knocking, and kept knocking, and kept knocking. And by God's grace, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that you did that. Because we became good friends. Our families became good friends. Uh, he came to Rooted Fellowship. Uh, John, when he talks about Jesus in his the opening chapter, uh, he says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He's referring to Jesus coming from heaven and living among us. Another way to say it is that Jesus moved in. That's what Reno and his family did. When they showed up to Roots Fellowship, they didn't treat us like a tourist attraction where they come and take a few pictures and then go back and say, hey, this was epic, now we can do this. But they moved in, spent two, three years with us. They became family. We cried together, we rejoiced together, we prayed together, we struggled together. I know that you would say we were a blessing to you, but you guys were a blessing to us. So we thank God for that. I know that he's going to do incredible things in and through you. You are a beautiful man with a beautiful heart, married to an amazing woman. We praise God for you. In John 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples. I promise you I'm not going to preach. <laughs> and he's blowing their minds as he always does. He's talking about his impending death. He's talking about his resurrection. He's talking about the fact that he's going to go back to the Father. He's going to go and prepare a place for them. It's incredible. It's in John 14 where we get that famous verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so in a moment of desperation, I believe it was desperation, Philip says in John 14 verse 8, show us the Father and that will be enough. Other translations say it this way. Show us the Father and we will be satisfied. It wasn't just the cry of Philip's heart. I believe it's the cry of every human heart. That at the core of us, we have been hotwired. The way that we have been desired by God is to see the Father. And as we do that, to recognize that that is enough. See, all of us, we will do everything to answer that question. Everything. We will give up of our time, our talents, our treasures, our bodies, so that someone might tell us that you are enough. But it's only in Christ who points us to the Father that as we see him, we recognize that he is enough, that he is all that we need. Why am I telling you this? Well, it's because this is why we do what we do, is that we want to put on display the Father heart of God. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, as you sing together, as you pray together, as you hear God's word being opened up, it's so that we might show you the Father, that we might show one another the Father, so that we might go out from, through those doors into the week and show others the Father heart of God. Everyone's heart's crying out for that. We just don't know it. They just don't know it. But the beauty of the church is we become that beacon of hope. So that in crisis, in COVID, we as a church can remain anchored because we are in Christ. Amen? Amen. 
I'm super excited for what God is going to do here. I really am. I'll say one last thing. Romans 12, verse 10, Paul writes there, he says that we should outdo one another in honor. It's a beautiful thing when a, a community does that. They, they're seeking to outdo one another in honor. I know that the mayor is so going to do that for you. As they love you, as they continue to cast vision, they're going to do that. I'm going to say to you what I hope someone had said to our congregation on my wife and I's behalf when we planted Rooted Fellowship. And it's this, Fellowship City, honor Reina and Marie. Don't glorify them, we only glorify God, but we honor one another. And so would you honor this couple? Because they're going to go through the most if they have not already gone through it. It's been a difficult year. But they pray for you. They think of you. They wrestle with you. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you that, that, that throughout the months and the years, it's going to be difficult. Some folks will leave. They'll transition because maybe there's better opportunities. Just That's how life works. And then some people will leave just because they didn't like the sermon you preached. <laughs> it's going to be tough. But when you have a community that loves you, that cares for you, that seeks to honor you, you don't have to go anywhere else to find that affirmation. You know that it's right here in this beautiful church. And so I'll do one another with honor. We become that beacon of hope, that salt and light. And then we watch God do what only He can do. And that is save many, restore many, reconcile many, heal many. For His grace, by His grace, and for His glory, and for our joy. Amen? Amen. All right. I'd like to call up Sanaba, who's going to come and pray. For you all. Um, and as she does so, I guess I'm just going to hand her the mic. Good morning, church. Um, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the author of all creation, the one who's seated on the throne, Father, we come to you this morning in the name of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is seated at your right hand. Father God, we approach your throne, your holy throne this morning with, with love, with gratitude, with awe. Father, we approach your throne with um, jubilation, with excitement, and with a celebration as we launch the church, as we launch Fellowship City. Um, your son, Ole, just mentioned um, what we are about. We are a gospel-centered, um, we are a, a disciple-making and transcultural church and with a mission to see the world awaken to the wonder of God and his transcultural church. Yeah. Father, we thank you for planting this seed, for planting this vision in the men and women, the faithful men and women, Father God. And we thank you for being faithful until this day. We thank you that they have been faithful. I mean, as, as they mentioned, it wasn't easy. But Father, we thank you that they persisted um, to a point where today, on the 24th of October, 2021, the whole vision culminated into the birth of yet another church, my God. So Lord, for Fellowship City, we just want to, before we even um, go forward, Father, we just want to come and just lay it all on your feet, Lord. Um, as we are on our marks to start this this race, my God, we just want to bring it to, to you, this vision, and say, Lord God, we pray that we accomplish each and everything that we intend to. Father God, we have seen the description of the three things. Father, we pray that we, as a church, are able, my God, to do exactly that, word for word, my God. Um, Father God, we pray to, for us to be a, a gospel-centered church, my God. We pray that may we never ever deviate from the true gospel of Jesus. Um, my God, um, you are the, the head of the church, Jesus. Um, and may we just um, submit to you, Father God, in each and everything that we do, my God. Um, so that, my God, you will 
present us as a church, as a church that is radiant, a church that is blameless, and a church that is holy, without um, blemish, without any wrinkle, and without any stain. Father God, as a disciple making church, my God, Holy Spirit, we pray that you, you um, empower us, my God, to, to be witnesses in this area, to be witnesses in Central in South Africa, and to the ends of the earth. My God, we pray that we be the city on a hill. Father, we pray that um, we be a disciple-making church, my God. Um, we thank you for the harvest that is already plentiful. And Father, we pray that you, you use us, my God, to be your laborers, my God, to go and make disciples of all nations. And Father God, we thank you for your promise because you, you, as you send us, my God, you said, surely you, you are with us always until the very end of the age. And Father, that is the promise that we hold to our hearts because we, we don't know how it's going to go. Uh, we can actually be fearful. But Father God, we thank you that we have the Holy Spirit in us and the Holy Spirit uh, that, is, uh, that is enabling us not to have fear, Lord God, but the spirit of power is in us. Um, the spirit of love is in, is in us, Father. And Lord, as a transcultural church, Father, you died on the cross and you reconciled us to God and to one another. And Father God, we pray that we love each other just the way that we are, regardless of race, regardless of uh, our, our, our skin color, regardless of our, our, our languages, my God. Because if we love one another, Father God, that's how people will see that we are your children. Father God, I pray. Um, that you be with us, my God. Um, and also, I pray that when people come in, Father God, they will see, and at first they will be surprised to say, how do they do it? Given where we come from as a country. But Father God, soon it will be a new normal for them. And Father God will invite other people, and other people will actually see um, that, Father God, it is all about you, Lord God. We are made, we are all made in your image and likeness. Father, although we have our own differences, we have uh, our diverse cultures, but we are made from the image of the one triune God. My God, at the end it won't matter because we will stand as a multitude of every nation, of every tongue, every race, Father God, and we will all proclaim that salvation belongs to the one who is seated on the throne in the resurrected man that sits on his side. We thank you for all that you have done on the cross, my God. And as fellowship city, there's no need for us to carry what you carried on the cross. And it's all accomplished, Father. Lord, I pray over this mission, and I pray, Father God, that a lot of churches will be birthed out of it. Yeah. It's not the end, yeah. it's just the beginning, my God. A lot of uh, generations to come, my God, will be able to see, will be able to witness, to witness the wonder of God and His transcultural church. And when we meet together as different races, it will not be a surprise. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we thank for 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 Fellowship City, Father God. I pray that this will be the church that will remain until you come back. Um, may we never lose who we are in you. May we never lose our center. May we learn from the church in Ephesus, my God, that we should never, ever leave our first love, which is you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that through Fellowship City, you will build a church and the gates of hate will not prevail against it. We pray all this and we declare all this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who was and is and is to come. Amen. <clears throat> okay, I'll read the scripture of the day. Uh, our reading text for this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, uh, verses 40 until 47. And I'm reading from the Christian Sabbath Bible. 
With many other words, he testified and strongly urged them, saying, Be saved from this corrupt generation. So those who accepted his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people were added to them. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now, all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all, as any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And this is the word of God. Good morning, everyone, and uh, once again, welcome from myself, my name is Reino, I'm the Reino that hasn't been spoken about <laughs> in some of these conversations. Absolutely overwhelmed, absolutely fulfilled, absolutely at peace, absolutely bursting at the seams of joy, absolutely all of those things. I cannot believe that the day has arrived. Thank you so much for being here, thank you for being part of our launch, thank you for coming to check us out. I'm, uh, I am 100% overwhelmed. At this stage. Also, thank you to everyone who made today, right? Thank you to our partners. You heard from our colleagues, Pierre Reinfeldt, you heard from One, you heard from Dirk Family Church, and just a bit. Thank you to all of our ambassadors. This church has a phenomenal team of people who said, Play me, coach, put me on the field, I want to make a difference. We had chairs being wiped, we had mic stands being rolled out, we had people being welcomed with some serious tunes. We had Donkey Bell over here. We had, um, People serving up coffee. We have a muffin man in the church that will uh, sort out our treats for us later. These are so many people who signed up. Uh, it's really, really an uh, awesome, awesome, awesome privilege to be part of the church uh, where everyone plays. And that is our dream. So thank you so much to everyone. Uh, thank you for being here, mate. Thank you for your kind words. Um, thank you for recalling August 2016. It's such an important date for us. In August 2016, my wife and I knew that we were going to plant a church that has something to do with culture. Ryan Peter, Peter said, speak to Anne. I think you guys know how that conversation went. Uh, but then you also know how the story unfolded from that point onwards. Let me just single out one person today, and that is my good friend and mate and brother, Lisa Hall. Lord. Mate, you and I have been on honeymoon now for almost four years. Right now you can hear the talk. The first message I received from anyone at the fellowship apart from One and Jono was from Sikho. And it was a message that said, Hello, my name is Sikho, I'm a city group leader, you guys are divided into me and I sit a group, we'll see you on Friday. And mate, I know familial, even collegial people say that there's a honeymoon phase, mate, you and I are going strong. <laughs> every mile, every minute, every meeting, every decision, mate, it has been such, such a privilege to do it with. Lisa and I are both fans of Chelsea Football Club, so if you're not, just bear with me for a second. Mate, you are like Michael Essien to Frank Lampard for me. You know what I mean? You are like, you are the Claude McAlaney to my Joe Cole. You are the Didier Drogba to my Hernan Crespo. You are the Peter Cech to my Carlo Carvalho, mate. Serving with you is, it's such a privilege. I really love you, mate. I really do. And it's been so good to be in this with you. And thanks for just doing what you do, mate, and making so much of this happen. The Sikha is a teacher, he's a shepherd, he's a phenomenal leader, he's one of our elders. He's actually supposed to be up here, and you guys will see him on the 7th of November teaching, but for now he was like, dude, I need to play where I am based, and that is in this whole production space. So thank you, thank you so much, mate. I really do appreciate that. Guys, we're in the book of Acts, <clears throat> Acts chapter 2. We've said before that Acts is the origin story of the church. 
Do you want to know anything about Christianity? Authentic Christianity? What it's supposed to be like? Read the book of Acts. This is the fourth week that we are in chapter 2. Chapter 2 is dense. There's a lot of detail there. You have to study it slowly. You have to chow it bite by bite. You have to flavor it and savor it. And if you missed week 1 to 3 and you're only jumping into it now, it's all on YouTube. It's all on our podcast channels. Please go and check it out. The second did week 1. I did week 2. And last week, we read Denny preached an absolute ripper of a sermon. Okay? It's not a ripper. It's a ripper of a sermon in which he explained the gospel so well by using the different stages of Jesus' life from birth all the way to his election and his coming, well, his ascension and his return. And then he showed that the people in Acts 2 have a particular response to this message, right? So Peter explained the gospel to the people. The people heard it. They were pierced to the heart. And then what did they do? They turned. They repented. They were headed that way, but now they're heading this way. They were baptized, right? They were marked as God's people, new identity given to them. And now the question is, what now? And that's the subject of our study today. Now, in our little uh, quad, or our you know, squares, triangles and squares, we had a four out of four in terms of diet and exercise, right? Being ways that we keep healthy. Let me show you some good food just to stir up the old hunger for our treat that's waiting. Go, do not look at it, analyze it, and go, he's definitely anti meat. I am not. Okay, I am not. But let's just take a look here. This is basic for anyone who wants to keep healthy, right? You have to put stuff into your body to have your body do what needs to be done. Exercise is the same. I gave you a little silhouette with no brand names, which you can imagine yourself into that picture. Exercise is also a way that we keep healthy, right? We devote ourselves to the same movement again and again and again for the purposes of getting healthy. Let me show you a picture of myself doing some exercise. This was me on the Transbomians mountain bike race, 28th of August. This was shortly after 6.30 in the morning. Cyclist in the background is my dad. We did this together as a team. It was about one or two degrees at that point. We started in minus four. So I took part in a mountain bike race this year, which was called the Trans Bomians. And I did two things to make it work. Diet and exercise, right? Those were the common denominators of me being able to do that. I lost nine kgs and I did five and a half thousand kilometers on a bicycle to be able to do that race with my dad, which was really, really awesome. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is it's a good illustration for what happened to the people in Acts. Because here's what happened. I'm a runner, right? I did comrades, seven consecutive, and God willing will do one again next year. So that is who I am, that's my identity, and that's what I do for exercise. I had to turn from running, and I had to point myself to cycling. And then I had to start doing it, right? Got the kit, got the bicycle, learned a new way of speaking, I met a new community, had to go to new routes, had to change around my week program, had to change around my diet, had even to change around our budget for in case I had mechanical breakdowns. I had to get more and more kit as winter rolled along, and I needed to keep warm. Like, everything changed for me. So turned from it, Became this new identity, got all the kit, and then I had to devote myself. I actually had to start doing it over and over and over again for five and a half thousand kilometers until I was fit enough to actually go and do this race. That's exactly what happened to the Christians next too. Really? Getting the new kit, and then starting to exercise. Taking on a new diet, learning new exercises, devoting themselves to it. And doing it again, and again, and again, and again. Let me show you the text again, that's not already. In red, it's like a summary of the diet and exercise. Do you want to know how the early church kept healthy? That's how they did it. And then all the green is elaborations or explanations of all the red. So how does the church keep healthy? Diet and exercise. How will we as a church keep healthy? Diet and exercise. Question, what is our diet? And what are our exercises? And that's what we're going to spend some time on today. Now the text says they devoted themselves to this. Now the word devote, devotion or devoted, it's kind of a Christian subculture word, right? It gets used so much in the wrong context, you kind of lost the meaning. Have you ever had this question in your little discipleship group? Have you been doing your devotions recently? Hey? Or how is your devotions going? So we've limited the word devotion to the act of 
doing something repetitively like Bible reading and prayer, but it's actually way more than that. Devotion means being committed to doing the same thing over and over because you actually think that it is important. Did anyone this morning, please do not raise your hand, did not brush your teeth before you came? I know that's the privilege of wearing the old mask, right? I can get away with some bad breath. But we brush our teeth every single day, hopefully twice, with a pea-sized amount of toothpaste, at least 60 seconds, both up and down, right? Why? Because we believe that it's good for us. We believe that that repetition to which we commit ourselves will eventually yield some sort of result or fruit. I just used the bicycle metaphor. I had to get on a bicycle almost daily, at least five times a week, and do exactly the same thing that I did yesterday because it was going to be important to me. It was going to be good to me later. So that's what this text says. It says they devoted themselves. Okay, so what did they devote themselves to? Four things. I'm going to say something about those four things, and we'll be out of here, and we'll enjoy our treat. The one thing. The first thing. A healthy body of Christ has biblical nourishment. That's what they devoted themselves to. Good diet. Loving fellowship. Core exercise of the church. Vibrant worship. And word and deed outreach. Has anyone ever been to the doctor? And then you report of whatever it is, ailment you're feeling or whatever your condition or your symptoms are. And then the doctor starts with the same regime as they always do since you were a child. They check your vitals first. It doesn't matter what's wrong with you, what sickness you're experiencing. Let's just make sure that the most important vital organs in your body is working well. Because if you don't have this, then the rest won't follow. And that's exactly what this is, guys. Acts 2 gives us the vitals. And the only thing that I want to do this morning is I want to explain what these vitals look like. And Fellowship City, from now until Jesus comes back, this will be our vital signs of a healthy church. So we want to be a healthy church, which means we should have these four things. Now, if you're a believer and you've read this text before, I really pray that you will be able to look at it in a fresh way. Right? And not just check out because you've heard sermons on this text so many times. If you're not a believer, though, just peeping into the faith and trying to figure out what is real Christianity, my prayer for you this morning is that you will see and you will understand that a life of faith, the life we speak about, a disciple of Jesus, is a huge adventure. And it's so exciting and it's so enjoyable. And it's so fun to be formed by the Spirit. It is indeed experiencing life in its fullness. No man, only abundance. That's what the gospel promises us. And if you're not a believer, what I want to put to you is, if you do decide to reject Christianity, please reject this. Please reject the real thing. <laughs> please reject Christianity in its biblical sense and the way that it's meant to be. Because often our experience of churches is lacking. Now there is grace for that. And I know none of us are perfect. But this is the picture of what the church is supposed to be. Let's look at biblical nourishment. Let's start there. I think I've got, a, yes, I've got an image for everyone. I do realize now that the autumn leaves are made a little bit, a little bit dumb deaf because it's spring. For that. I took this picture from our website because I think our website's cool and I like the picture and I like the color. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They gathered. They gathered in the temple because there were big groups. They gathered in homes because there were small groups. This is a learning community. It is a community that wanted to absorb and hear and learn teaching. If you want to know if your vitals are healthy as a church, are we teachable people? Are we eager to learn? Do we hunger for the word? Or do we pretend as if we know everything? It's a distinctive mark of a church. We never know everything. We can always learn. That's what's the joy about the Bible, right? I've been following Jesus now, committed for 17 years. I still learn stuff. Recently I was like, I'm going to go back to Genesis. There's a whole vibe there with Jacob and his sons and Joseph. I think I'm missing out. And as I'm reading Genesis now, I go, oh, there we see this. This is absolutely phenomenal and actually quite depressing. So I want to fast forward the Gospels, but then I have to go back and read the story again because you can always learn. Why is this first? Why does uh, uh, Luke write to us that they devoted themselves to the teaching first? Listen to this, it's important. Because what they were learning is about who they are worshiping. Sure. Right? So we want to worship God. Well, we're easy. That's what we're learning in the Bible. 
That's what our biblical notion is all about. That's what we chow is about. Is that helps us to understand who we are worshipping. Now the apostles' teaching, written of here in Acts, is different than the announcement of the gospel, right? The announcement of the gospel is saying, God loves you, God made a way for you to be in relationship with Him. He came, He would be died on the cross, He was resurrected from the dead, He poured out His Spirit, and He ascended and He will come back one day. That's the gospel story. The apostles' teaching is something different. That is how the apostles helped those people to explore the manifold implications of this announcement, right? We heard it, we turned, we got marked, we got the kit. What now? That's the apostles' teaching. Is how do we flesh this out? How does this manifest in our lives? I mean, I can imagine the apostles, they were actually still alive at that point, sitting, saying to people, this is what he said. This is what he did. This is what he commanded us to do. So, therefore, let us know. Right? The apostles' teaching come to us in the form of the New Testament. If we read the New Testament, we see what it means to live lives as followers of Jesus. And it's going to take us a lifetime to do it, which is great, right? Scrub stays exactly the same. We'll just grow in our maturity and in depth of it. Now, that requires daily devotion to this, right? We cannot eat every seventh day, guys. You'll die. If you eat early every seventh day, and if you only eat like a starter, like man in the sun, we have to work this diet daily. A couple of questions that I want to ask you is do you understand the gospel? Are you able to proclaim it? Do we as a church understand the gospel, hold to it, and proclaim it weekly? Let me ask you a more personal question what are you consuming? What are you chowing, guys? What are you reading? Choice said, in her vulnerability, I ate everything and anything. If we eat that as Christians, we will be unhealthy. Yeah. So what are you reading? What does your commute look like? What do you fill your mind and your heart with? What kind of media do you engage with? It's very important for us as Christians, not being old school, just being biblical. Let's look at the second one, loving fellowship. Now the Greek word for this is koinonia, and it's about sharing more than we think as individual Western people. It is a commitment to sharing everything we have and everything we all with other people. It's about being willing, listen, to be known. It's about entering into relationship, and it's about being willing to share of yourself, and as you share of yourself, to look the other person in the eye and receive what they are sharing of themselves. It's the change from proximity, being close to one another, to compassion, really feeling one another, and growing in deep affections for one another. Often in a church, we sit next to each other in close proximity, but we don't care for one another because we never turn to one another. We don't look each other in the eye. We don't see one another and experience compassion for one another. That's why the world is divided into us and them. What if in the church, us and them just becomes us? What if in the church, we have the ability to cross those boundaries, to let those walls come down? This is the best place to do it. Like, if you ever want to be known, be known in the church context, where there's love and grace and understanding and compassion and equality, equal value for everyone. Right? The greatest leveler in the world is the cross. No one more important than anyone else. That's why we dream of being a transcultural church, guys. We don't dream of having a Sunday service where we have multiple languages and ethnicities. That's way too small of a dream for us. We dream of being a church where we can cross these boundaries because of the gospel. Not because we're cool, not because we play great music, not because we have representation in language and culture, but because we believe that Jesus loves all of us equally and He made us a family. He was the one who broke down the walls. He's the one that says, Reino, you and Lesejo can be brothers. You are brothers. Both of you carry the same kit. Both of you carry the same baptism, and you were bound together by my love and my blood. No political manifesto, no charter of human rights, no constitution. My blood brought you together. That's the church, guys. Loving fellowship, authentic, real relationship with one another. Can you imagine the impact that this church will have in this area if that is our testimony? If people peep in, they look at us, they listen to us, and they see us, 
And in that they see something that they have ne never seen, that they have never dreamed of. They see this supernatural work of Jesus. What is the hope for our country? The gospel. What is the hope for the world? The church. Jesus Christ the Savior. I'm not saying the government is an illegitimate institution. God instituted it. But we can't put our hope in that to save us from everything. It can only be the gospel. This takes time, guys. It takes intentionality. It takes effort from us. It's difficult. And especially in pandemic times, we've been so overloaded with information. And we've been so starved of relationship in isolation. Guys, did any of you this morning walk up to someone and go, Hey! We don't even know how to touch each other's blood anymore. Touch it, click it, boom! Slam the shoulder, get a little hug in there. Smell the product on the neck. That's where we used to be. We don't even know how to do it anymore. We get tired. Many of you already flipped up on your phones. Jeez, how long is this guy going to be? Because I'm going to pause him. I want to forward. I want to watch something else now. We're distracted. We don't even know how to do a relationship anymore, guys. So where do we start? Let's start there. I do believe in the gospel of coffee as well. <laughs> but let's start there. Let's start here. Let's start here. Let's make some eye contact. Let's get back into the relationship. It's going to ask work and effort of you. In South Africa, we've got something called a ninja Christian. Floats in here 20 minutes after the service started. Floats out of here 10 minutes before service ends. Oh, that guy's quick. He's so silent. He comes in and none of us know of him or her. And then we hear, no one reached out to me. Now I understand if the church dropped you and didn't reach out to you, I do apologize. But did you, did you reach out to someone? Just ask me. Because it takes effort to get into community, guys. It's two ways. The breaking of bread is mentioned in this, uh, in this portion of scripture. They ate together. Who of you sits at a dinner table with a team's meeting on screen? No one does. There's no agenda. There's no walls or palisades. It's just you. Scoffing on some good food. Looking someone else in the eye. That's why they did it! And there was humans there to eat, let's be honest. But that's why they did it. They got together around dinner tables. That is where we cross these boundaries, right? It's easy for me to do the elbow click with my colleague at work that's different than I am. Let that colleague come and open up your fridge. Yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Let that colleague come in and check out your kid's bedroom. Let that colleague come in and borrow your car quickly you and get some ice in the engine. That's where it gets real. And that's where we cross these boundaries. Eat good food together. And it was in that city that they broke bread. Did you guys see it? So in all of this other pleasantries and conversations and getting to know one another, there was a moment that they said, let's break this bread and remember that Jesus' body was broken for us. Let's pour this wine and remember that His blood was shed for us. Why on earth would there be any hostility between us and you? Great are you, Lord. Worship and thankfulness from the table. That is what we should do. And it's as easy as Getting out your phone, fingerprint recognition, unlock this bad boy, and invite someone for dinner. You can even put an asterisk to say, all COVID protocols will be observed. <laughs> if you want to. That's what you want to do, then do it. But let's do it as a church. Okay, thirdly, vibrant worship. You'll see that they devoted themselves to what? The prayers. Now at this point, this group of people in the book of Acts uh, is almost entirely a Jewish community. Which means they have a rich tradition of prayer, right? Almost a 2,000 year old tradition of praying together. Specific times, specific prayers. Cycling through the Psalms. Cycling through the prayers of Jesus. And they gather cons constantly and consistently to do this. And they enjoyed it. It was vibrant. When they did it, people looked at it and went, There's a vibe going on there. I am going to take a peek. Let me say, if anyone peeked in there this morning while you guys were leading worship, that is what they would have seen. I was struck down by the grace of God this morning in worship. It was unbelievable. Let me hear all emotional again. Now, when we sang, you are light, you are hope, um, uh, the 
verses of, of great on you, Lord. I just, I just felt God saying, that's my wish for centurion. Because there's people in darkness. There's people without hope. There's people that is broken. And I'm the fix. Bring them to me. And call them to me. Guys, it's as easy as enjoying what we are doing here. Being vibrant in worship. One of my accountability questions with my discipleship group, listen to this one, it's a rapper. Am I enjoying prayer? Am I enjoying praying? If you already pray at the table, and it doesn't even sound like you're enjoying that, I cannot imagine you enjoying the vibrant prayer life of God. And if you're a Christian, you should. Why? Not because we should do it, but because we get to do it. Let me use my life as an example. I look at her in the morning and go, well, I have to kiss you. Because that is what is expected of me. I love you. How do you think our marriage will be? No! I look at her and I go, I actually say these words, don't quote me, holy mackerel, love you. I get to do this. It's a privilege to kiss her and to hug her and to tell her I love her. And it's a privilege to hear that back. Every day, multiple times. It doesn't get old. I enjoy it when I do it. And I'm filled with awe and filled with joy. When we talk to our dad, that should be our experience. Because he's our dad and we are his kids and he loves us and he has everything in his hands and we have this freedom to just be with him and abide with him. We have a six-year-old and a four-year-old, and they climb on us still, even though Ava has now reached 20 kgs, right? So it's quite heavy. She climbs with me on the couch, and then there's no reason for it. It's just like, I, I want to I be, like, being next to you just isn't enough. I want to be on top of you. And then Katie stands on my lap, and then she stands at her back and gets my nose, and then she wiggles. Because now I'm really with my dad, and I go, blom, 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 just hang on a second here. Yeah. It's enjoyment. When you look at it, you are convinced that there's something there. And that's part of our testimony. If you see me interacting with my wife in the way I just explained, you know there's something there that has validity and legitimacy. It's not a fairy tale or story. It's not a 10 point proposition on why I know loves me. It's this beautiful picture of something happening. And I long for that. And that is what I want. That's part of our testimony. That's part of our shared good news. If you're a growing Christian and you haven't actually felt this many times, just keep going. Repeat these habits, right? Devote yourselves to them. Your understanding will all grow. You'll be remade in your mind. Your life will be remade. You'll learn how to respond to Jesus in worship and in faithfulness. Last one. Word and deed outreach. Spirit and power witness, that's the story of Acts 2, happens through words and deeds. Do you remember my first sermon in Acts? I showed that what was proclaimed was the words of Jesus and the deeds of Jesus. And then I said, as we go through the book of Acts, what you'll see is words and deeds. Not either or, it's both and. Our word ministry creates and brings into being this new church. Saying to someone, you are now a child of God. You have a new identity. You should now join us. Is the same way that someone said to me, I'm so glad to hear that you're a cyclist. Are we meeting at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning to go and cycle? Because that's what you should do now. And I'm inviting you into it. Right? So through words we create reality. We create this new community. And through deeds, we reinforce this word because it in itself becomes an effective witness. Check this. You are all God's children. And then we go and have a treat. And then we see through our deeds and our compassion and our care that what we see in here is true out there. And that's how it works. Word and deed. Jesus loves you. You say it. And Jesus loves you. You show it. Both word and deed. That means that in Acts chapter 2 and in Fellowship City today, it is 100% legitimate to, to say to someone, come and see. Right? Invite someone into it. That's what happened in Acts. That's what happened in the early church. Come and see. And I do want to ask you to please do it. Okay? Keep on inviting people with a friendly and a loving posture. Say to them, there's a place that I would like you to come to. If that's your vibe, and that's the way you want to do evangelism, then do it. 
That's why this launch is called the public launch, because it's open to anyone from this point onwards. But not only is it come and see, it's also go and tell. Do you guys see? And go and tell sometimes asks for go and show. <laughs> so the way that you show compassion to people inside and outside the church is word and deed outreach. We'll see through the book of Acts that they care deeply for the people inside the church and they care deeply for the people outside the church, both at the same time. That's what fellowship study is here for. Let's figure out how God wants to do it. Let me land here. I am on 28 minutes. It is un. Believable by God's grace. Yeah, I wanted to land just below 30 minutes. God is being faithful this morning. Okay. Everything I said to you now is basics. Absolute basics, and you know it. You've heard it a gazillion times if you grew up in church, and if you've heard it for the first time now, you'll go, yeah, that's achievable. It's been the basics. It'll always be the basics. You know what a healthy church does? A healthy church does these well. The basics. Study any business literature, and what they'll tell you often, strategies and processes and all of those things, they'll say the companies that flourish are the companies that do the basics well. If we read the Bible, we see that the churches that does the basics well are the churches that flourish. The moment we step away from this, we get the reasons of the whole New Testament. Churches started straying from these basics. They started, they, they stopped doing it. And therefore Paul had to write the letters, correct them, help them back. Right? The Apostle Peter had to do that as well. Let's do this well. And let's pray that God would do it in a more significant way than he has up until this point in this area. That's revival. Revival is not God doing something extraordinary. Revival is God doing what he has always done, but in an extraordinary way. You guys see? Right? God has always called people to Him. He's always restored people. He's always saved people. He's always healed people. He's always reconciled people. He's always given in abundance. But in a revival, He does that in a significant, tangible, visible way. Let's trust that if we are a healthy church and we do these things, then God will do this through us. That He will say, I'm going to use this church and I'm going to do these basics through this church in a more significant way way than before. And through that, he'll do what he does. And that is call people to himself, to himself, save them, and restore them. That's my prayer for our church. As one of the oaks that are supposed to teach here and that are supposed to teach you, that's my prayer for this church, is that we will be a healthy body of Christ. We're going to do a prayer for us. The worship team will be out. We'll have a time of response and worship. Emil, one of the pastors of Dorengroof, will see a benediction of us, and we'll be out, and we'll have a few kids praying. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, now as a church, on this beautiful day, with all these awesome things to celebrate and be thankful for, we, we prostrate ourselves before you, we humble ourselves before you, we declare that we are available for you to do this great work through us, we confess that we are convicted by your word and that we heard the basics of the gospel preached to us once again today. We know that you called us. We know that you sent us. We know that bringing all of these people together is all your work, Lord Jesus. Now have your way in us. Help us to do these things in a deep and significant way. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we will thirst for your word, that we will eat your word, that we will be well nourished, that we will have a solid, solid, solid diet of good news and of grace. Gospel. I pray that we would be a church with loving worship. Please work in our hearts. Please make our heads cold and our hearts warm. Please help us to move across and over all of our man made boundaries that is just a product of a sinful world so that we can really, really experience deep communion with other image bearers uh, that you have also created. Help us, Lord Jesus, to enjoy you, to enjoy worship, and to enjoy prayer. Now help us to put word and deed together as we reach lost and broken people in the days of the USA. Have your way, Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Can we all stand? Just as we stand, we'll be just seeing in response. Um, just want you. Just close your eyes and um, this is
is your close your eyes and this is you and what we feel is the us and it's the Lord that enables all of us. Yeah God I thank you that you Jesus you're not just the story that you read in the Bible. history that happened so long ago. God, that you are real. And your presence is manifest and real. As real as this moment is. God, let us not forget that Lord, when the enemy comes and wants to bring doubt so that we stray away from our healthy doubt.
a seat, please. I won't, won't be long. I know it's past your time already, but I'm from Dunnercliffe Church. Um, and you know this is Dunnercliffe's building, but we don't see it as Dunnercliffe's building, okay? Because this is the Lord's building. Um, it's His kingdom, and this is just the, the facility we use in His kingdom. So we're very grateful uh, that we can actually properly use this on a Sunday. Um, I want to share uh, in two minutes. I'm just gonna, I'm not going to tell you a whole story. I just want to share something, and then I'll tell you why I'm sharing it. Uh, last year, you know, it was a difficult year for every one of us. For me, it was a little, a little bit more difficult. Uh, my son was four years old. He fell into the swimming pool. Uh, he was without a heartbeat for about 45 minutes. Um, he went to Garden City Hospital. He was laying in an induced coma for um, initially it was to be for five days. It, at the end, it was about seven to eight days, and he was taking, they were taking him slowly out of the coma. But during that seven days, it becomes a very long time when you sit next to a, a hospital bed, and all you can do is pray, all you can do is bless him, all you can do, do is spend time with the Lord, time in His Word. Um, and there's a song that we started singing, I'm not sure if, if, if it's part, part of your repertoire, there's a song, it's a, it's a well-known song. We started singing in, in our church last year, it's a way, way maker. And there's a part of that song that um, the meaning of it became very more clear, much more clear to me while I was sitting next to the hospital bed. And that is, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Uh, to know that the Lord is working. Okay, well, I'm saying this. Uh, Ten years ago, we had the vision of serving English-speaking people, Christians in our community. With the Reformed theology, because we are a Reformed Church. So that's what we wanted. That's the vision we had. That's the desire we had in our hearts. Ten years, we struggled. What I'm seeing here this morning is making my heart very, very clear. Because this is the vision we had. That's the, 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 the desire we had for this community. To serve the English-speaking speaking people of God's family. So... What I'm seeing is, the Lord said, I honor your desire for this people, and I'm giving you a reign I'm giving you a fellowship city. And it's not us, it's, it's Him, but the Lord just said, partnership. We're going to have a splendid partnership, and the reign is going to do it. So, while last year was bad, while we were struggling with a lot of things, while it looked like our English service is on his last breath, the Lord said, I'm working. Even when you don't, you, you don't see it, even when you don't feel it, you're working. And now I know he's resuscitated, I would say, the, the English community from Durnkirk and he's giving it completely new life of Christ. So that's what I'm very really grateful for. And I'm grateful that you can properly use this building. I'm I'm grateful that it is here just standing empty on Sundays. I'm grateful that you fill this and that you pray here and something great is going to happen. Most of the people here today say, so I'm, I'm going to sing a benediction. If you know the words, sing it with me. I know you know this word. You can stand. It's from 2 Corinthians 13, verse 13. You can stand. You don't have to play any music for me. I'm doing I'm going to do it a cappella. <laughs> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore. 